Nirvana! Just three weeks before the Video Music Awards show, Courtney Love gave birth to the only child she and Cobain would ever have, a daughter they named Frances Bean. At first, the baby's arrival seemed to be just the sort of stabilizing force that Cobain needed in his life. Right when she was born, that's what was the beginning of taking us out of the slump, because she was like this beam of optimism that came up. Like, all of a sudden, there was just all kinds of weird stuff going on, and then all of a sudden, there was this baby born, and I think it was like a something really, really, really positive that came out of some kind of hard times, and, and it was kind of a blessing. And I was really glad to see her there, and everybody was, and, and uh, Kurt and Courtney were proud parents, and it was really good. It was, it was the best thing that could have happened, to tell you the truth. Singers Lake Washington. Home. Though the identity of the victim has not been released, the King County Medical Examiner is working on the presumption it is that of Washington residents hold their breath at this hour as the medical examiner continues his investigation. Here's a closer look at the Cobain home at 171 Lake Washington. Police are on the scene conducting an investigation. Just saw him having this daughter I, I drove by and I saw him there um, just after the the coma thing that happened and he just was so into his daughter and that's all I could think about when I heard that he had died. When it comes to accepting Kurt Cobain's death as a suicide, one of the most troubling contradictions for many people is how attached he was to his daughter. We get numerous accounts from people saying that Kurt was bummed out, he was in a bad mood, and then Francis Bean was carried into the room and all of a sudden he was all smiles. In fact, one of the very last people to see Kurt Cobain alive, possibly the last person to see him alive before the people who were with him at his death, was a curly red-haired neighbor who said, I saw him down at the park with his daughter. That's all I could think about was how into his daughter he was. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that this man took his life when I just saw how happy he was with his daughter. This contradiction has plagued all of us for numerous years. I cannot tell you how many times I've read in the comments, this guy loved his daughter so much, he would have never left Francis Bean. Through all this time researching the Kurt Cobain death, there's one thing that I have purposefully ignored, and that is Francis Bean. If we all feel that there's no way Kurt would have left his daughter, how do you think that makes her feel? Now, I'm sure that there are home videos, there are pictures that Francis has that you and I will never see, that will always be cherished by the family and never let out into the public eye. But surely, Francis has seen things like the American Spy Fox channel. She's seen things like Soaked in Bleach. She's an avid book reader. She's, she's come across Max Wallace and Ian Halperin's Love and Death the murder of Kurt Cobain, or who killed Kurt Cobain, or whatever they called their book. She's aware of these things. And for a long time, it was easy for me to envy Francis Bean, to say, oh, well, must be nice to have an $11 million Easter egg that you didn't have to work for. Must be nice to have absolutely no sentimental value toward Kurt Cobain, my hero, and just give his guitar away. Must be nice to get $100,000 a month in royalties. You see, like Francis Bean, I don't know my father either. And there are a ton of fatherless kids out there, just like I was, who think, what are you crying for? Why are you trying to make your life out to be so hard? I'd rather have $11 million and $100,000 a month income and no father than no father and zero financial security. At least you got a leg up on me. But I realize there's a big difference. My father 
father is still alive. My father did reach out to me and he was willing to have a relationship with me. I chose to not have a relationship with him. Francis Bean cannot make that choice. It was made for her. And although it seems as though she led this glamorous lifestyle, it wasn't at all glamorous. After studying her, I found out that my assumptions and many other assumptions that I've heard in the comments are incorrect. Francis did not have a glamorous lifestyle. In fact, it is everything that you think it would be with a child being raised by a crack addict. Imagine your mother is Courtney Love and that's what you get. Now at the beginning, you saw clips of Kurt holding the baby, very quiet, calm, baby sleeping, feeding her. Kurt makes sure that anyone in the vicinity of the baby is behaving like a responsible adult. After Kurt dies, this is what happens to Francis's life. Anybody happen to notice that Francis is holding things to her ears? What appears to be slices of bread? Maybe it was, I don't know exactly what it was, but Courtney parades her around like a trinket, like a trophy. Now, it's well known that Courtney did not raise Francis. There would always be a live-in nanny, a male and a female nanny, who were usually just drug buddies of Courtney Love. Practically the only time Frances really spends any time with her mother is when Courtney's holding her up in front of screaming teenagers to show them Kurt Cobain's baby. Look at the trophy I have. We see Kurt spending time with his child and really being absorbed in the baby. And then we see Courtney just like, well, bring her out when I need her. And then Courtney, in all her feminist ways, tells the girls in the crowd that they can have a baby too. That's great, Courtney. Encourage 15, 16, 17 year old girls to go out and get pregnant. I'm sure that'll work out for them. In this video, we are going to go over Francis's childhood, at least what is public knowledge, because Courtney did try to isolate Francis. Aside from lugging her around to various music venues around the world so Courtney could show her off to screaming fans, she did isolate her. Not so much for Francis's protection but because Courtney didn't want her parenting skills or lack thereof being put under a microscope. She learned from the Vanity Fair article right after Francis was born. If you want to know more about that, watch my Jeffrey Epstein video. She didn't want the media, the public, to know what was going on in their household. Frances was not isolated and privately educated for her own good. She was privately educated and isolated for Courtney's own good. And how do we know all this? Well, mainly because the 2009 deposition in which Francis Bean Cobain was seeking emancipation was leaked. It gives us a glimpse into what it was like growing up in Courtney Love's house as a young child. Another insight into the childhood home of Francis Bean comes to us through the form of social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Whenever something does not go Courtney Love's way, she cannot help herself. She will get on social media and try to humiliate whoever she feels is the cause of her problem. It's never her own fault. It's always somebody else's fault and she will lash out at them on social media. She's been sued multiple times. She's paid out big bucks. Matter of fact, Courtney loves reputation. She has done so much to damage her own reputation that she is now considered beyond libel. She even explains it to Howard Stern. Now, how can a guy in a movie accuse you of killing your husband and get away with that? How come you don't sue this guy? Well, he can't. The, the, first of all, I'm past libel. Do you right. know what I mean? Like, there's this, there's this whole thing in America where, like, you're libel-proof. Right. Because you've had so much crap said about you. Right, yeah. It's totally awful. A libel-proof plaintiff is a plaintiff who is just 
basically such a scumbag and has just done so many horrible things, they could never possibly expect to succeed in a defamation case. Uh, examples of people who probably couldn't sue uh, for liable would be someone like Dr. Kevorkian. It's someone who's just engaged in things that are so socially reprehensible that there is no way they could ever possibly expect to sue anybody for something that was damaging about their reputation because they have no reputation to begin with. In other words, she cannot sue anybody anymore because she is such a terrible person when it comes to defamation. She can sue for other reasons, but not for defamation. So if you've ever wondered why Courtney Love didn't sue Nick Bloomfield, didn't sue Tom Grant, didn't sue Mal Max Wallace, Ian Halperin, American Spy Fox, Richard Lee, and whoever else is out there, that's why. Of course, there could be a whole other side to this because Courtney would then be in a position where she can be deposed and probably have to talk about things that she does not want to talk about on the record. Anyway, I digress. If we want to find out how Frances Bean grew up, what she was going through as a child, we really need to look at her mother. After all, anything that affects your parent as a child is going to also affect you. Troubles for Courtney and Frances occur occur only one year after her father's death, 1995. Courtney Love ends up in two different courtrooms, one for assaulting a fan at a whole concert. I wonder how many parents know. These people learned about today's alternative rock concerts as jurors when they served on a case involving singer-actress Courtney Love. Courtney Love is summoned to a Florida district court on two counts of assault and battery. Courtney assaulted two concert goers, fans of her band Hole, Robert Lucas and Ryan O'Donnell. At the time, Ryan O'Donnell was 17, he was a teenager, so she has assaulted a minor. Charges that could land her up to two years in jail. Her attorneys, who get to pick at least half the jury, choose older white women. Courtney also looks out and gets an older white female judge, Judge Janice Hawker, who is a known, for lack of a better term, feminazi. The boys explain in court what Courtney Love did to them, and their story is even backed up by a photograph from a local newspaper photographer. Today, in this courtroom, do you see the individual that struck you at the edge concert? Could you please point out and describe what the person has on? That's Courtney Love right there. She announced to the crowd that she wasn't going to play until she saw more women in the front. And when she jumped off the stage, uh, she immediately walked forward and started punching some of the fans. She was first saying, get back like this. And then next thing I, next thing I know, knew is, is buried back. I just started getting hit. The photographer is standing right behind Courtney Love. Here's her hair, and this is her arm, allegedly pulled back to punch this person, Ryan O'Donnell. And what is that? That is me, and that's her rearing back to punch me. Courtney's attorneys argued that there was no actual picture of her punching anyone. She just had her fist back, and they also argued that the youth of America in the 90s expected to be violently attacked when they went to shows. They wanted this, they expected it, they hoped for it, and they got it. This might be true. I might get behind that sort of defense if we were talking about Florida-based band Deicide or a band like Pantera from Texas, but no kid expected to be brutally assaulted by Courtney Love going to a whole concert. However, her attorneys do a good job of convincing these older middle-aged women who'd never been to a rock concert before that Courtney Love was just a strong woman trying to make it in a man's world and that these teenagers would have expected her to do so things. Judge Janice Hawker dismissed the case, said there wasn't enough evidence, including the photograph. Here's what's even more interesting. This case happened in March. Later in October of 95, Courtney Love assaulted yet another fan who she beckoned on stage. He thought that she wanted to dance with him or she was trying to just be cool to him and let him on stage. Once he got up on stage, she 
began punching and kicking and pummeling him. That also happened in Florida, and it never even made it to a courtroom. The prosecutors refused to even charge her. The same year, 1995, Courtney does get arrested for an altercation on a flight to Melbourne, Australia, where she is arrested after the flight lands. Australia found herself in court in Melbourne Saturday following an altercation during a flight from Brisbane. Love was charged with committing an offense on board an airplane after she reportedly cursed at a flight attendant who had asked her to take her feet down from a wall that separates different sections of the plane. Love's attorney said she'd been suffering a fever and back pains before boarding the flight. She was placed on a $500 one-month good behavior bond, Australia's version of probation, after pleading guilty. A separate charge of intimidating a member of the flight crew was dropped reportedly because Love cooperated with authorities upon landing in Melbourne. Love's attorney said that the confrontation was a misunderstanding due to the singer's physical condition. No, no, that's that's not her drugs. She didn't hit anybody. Damn it, this is just a big misunderstanding. Okay, you're free to go, ma'am. How does she get away with so much crap? Anyway, moving forward, we know if you watched one of my last videos talking about Courtney Love and Edward Norton in the late 90s, she did straighten up her act. In order to be an actress in Hollywood, it was something she had to do, and she did straighten herself out for a couple of years, which tells us that Courtney is capable of behaving normally. Come 2000, Courtney enters probably the worst years of her life, and I'm sure the worst years of Francis Bean Cobain's childhood. Courtney herself has referred to the years 2000 through 2005 as her crack years. So again, from the selling of Nirvana in the early 2000s, Courtney started suing Dave and Chris, trying to take over Nirvana. And then in 2003, February 2003, Courtney is again escorted off of a flight at London's Heathrow Airport for the same stuff, trying to fight with the airline flight attendants. And this is what really bothers me. Within an article by CNN, a witness said there were a lot of rage voices but Courtney Love is Courtney Love I guess that's rock and roll rock and roll is fighting injustice not acting like a huge baby on an airplane I've done my fair share of flying around the country and anybody who's done their fair share of flying will tell you what's the worst thing that could happen to you on a plane you get a crying baby on the plane right well no there's one thing worse you get on a plane with Courtney Love who wants to act like a big child that's the kind of stuff I was talking about people letting her off the hook just by saying oh that's just Courtney Love Later in 2003, Courtney will be arrested on two felony drug charges and forging a prescription. This judge, unlike the judge in Florida, does not let her off the hook, and this will be the first time she loses custody of Francis Bean Cobain, who will then go to stay with grandmother Wendy O'Connor. Not that she was all that great of keeping track of Francis anyway, you know, like that time she lost her at an awards show because she was was more concerned with getting her picture taken than being a mother. One, two, three, now. Mom and daughter were at odds in our ET Grammy photo booth. Earlier in the evening, their problems were even more serious. Not lost. Well, you, you said I was going to be at your seat. No, they sent you down there. And yeah, and were you said, no, then you said I, you'd be down at your I'm seat. I'm getting the wire hangers out. Losing track of 11-year-old Frances Bean at the Grammys is just the latest in a series of bizarre turns in Courtney's world. Yesterday, she was a no-show at the courthouse in Beverly Hills, where she was to appear for a hearing on drug possession charges stemming from an arrest last October. Yep, you heard right. She just decided not to go to court. And what did they do? They stayed an arrest warrant. Now, what does that mean? That means they gave her another chance to show up in court. This is not something that would happen to the common man or woman. If you are summoned to court and you don't show up, you get an immediate bench warrant and any cop anywhere can arrest you and take you to jail and detain you there and then forcibly transport you to court to ensure that you show up before the judge. Not Courtney Love, they were just like, oh, well, we'll just give her another chance to show up. She did show up. And when she did show up to that Beverly Hills court, guess who was waiting for her? Oh, you're going to love this one. Richard Lee. Courtney Love, is it true that... Courtney, no. 
1993, did you offer Eldon Hoke $50,000 to murder your husband, Kurt Cobain? Oh, God, you, Richard Lee. You suck so bad. Courtney, according to Ellen and Polygraph Examiner Edward I. Gelb, Oh, God. Elvin you need, Hulk, so need to go away. Oh, I'm getting in the car now. Oh, this way, darling. With the highest oh, degree of truthfulness. Strange, right? Courtney, who generally will take on anybody and loves the media, gets the hell out of there as quickly as she can. In all seriousness though, guys, Courtney's erratic behavior during these court proceedings, the fact that she was failing multiple urine analysis tests, told the court she wasn't even trying with her probation. They end up putting her in drug rehab and she loses custody of Francis Bean. Now, this is gonna be a traumatic thing for any child. Not only is your mom mom on TV behaving very strangely, but now you're thrust into another home. This would have been a traumatic experience for any child, let alone a child who has a celebrity mother. However, Frances does tell us later that her grandmother taught her something very important. Frances has let it be known that she grew up in complete luxury. She knew nothing else. She was surrounded by anything she wanted at any time. She says that living with her grandmother and her aunt Brianne taught her a different side of life. They taught her to be grateful for the money she gets. They showed her another side of the family that had to work for every single meal they ate. Francis became more appreciative over money, having seen the struggles that her other side of the family had went through, even her own father. Francis says that her grandmother has inspired her to help those in need. You can see Francis's charitable side reflected on Nirvana's YouTube channel. Of course, Francis would have a say in this. She is part owner of Nirvana. She would have a say in what charities are promoted on the Nirvana YouTube channel. But to me, one of the coolest things Francis has done is put certain people in their places. Frances is not afraid to speak her mind when a celebrity complains about the hardships of life or other sensitive topics. She called out Kendall Jenner for being a self-absorbed idiot for tweeting that she wished things could be easier. Yes, because we all know how difficult Kendall Jenner's life is. Now, here's something you might not have thought about. Courtney Love has been seen palling around with Kris Jenner. This means that chances are, Frances Bean has probably met Kendall Jenner. Her mother is friends with Kendall's mother. So Francis isn't being a keyboard warrior. She's not going online and just saying something nasty to some random celebrity. This is someone that chances are their paths have crossed, they've met, and they're probably going to cross again. When you consider that, it takes a little more bravery, knowing this is someone I called out on their social media, and I'm gonna have to respond to them the next time mom and I go for tea at the Kardashians. They might cross each other's paths at a dinner party, and Francis is brave enough to stick up to her and say, yeah, I put you in your place because you were acting stupid. You are privileged and you need to just be quiet when it comes to complaining about life. And you know what? While we're at it, I want to just go ahead and talk about all the cool things that I have found out about Francis Bean. Because I find it amazing that this girl grew up to be the type of person she is interested in the things that she's interested in, friends with the people she's friends with after having a really tough start to life. We can come back around to all of Courtney's follies. For right now, I want to concentrate on some really cool things about Francis Bean. It wasn't until recently that I started looking into Francis, so it's not like I've been following her. A lot of you out there probably know a lot more about her than I do. But one thing I did find is she's an avid book reader and an avid book collector. One of the few times she has opened up to the public and showed us a little peek into her life, she chose to show off her book collection. I think this speaks volumes about her character. Sadly, I think it reinforces the fact that she was isolated as a kid, but it lets us know that she's creative, she's imaginative, 
and she is comfortable with spending time by herself. This may be something only comic nerds and book nerds like me will get, but there are people in this world who just love books, the feel of them, the smell of them, they collect them and organize them, and Frances is one of those people. During her Instagram tour of her small library, she tells us this is where the biographies go, this is where nonfiction goes, This, these are books I want to read, these are books I have read. Like she's barely very particular and very organized with her book collection. Interesting, she also shows off her comic collection and one of her favorites is titled Eerie. Now, if you know anything about Isaiah Silva, Francis Bean's ex-husband, you would know that he's in a band called the Eeries. I wonder if he got the name from Francis's comic book collection. Also, did you know that back in 2014, when one of the best comedians the world has ever known, Robin Williams, took his own life, some say to spare his family from having to care for him, Francis Bean reached out to Zelda Williams. Yes, Robin Williams named his daughter Zelda after his favorite video game, Princess Zelda from Zelda. Francis reached out to Zelda and offered her counsel, offered her advice, offered her help because she knows what it feels like to have a famous father who was taken from us too early. Did you also know that Francis Bean is really good friends with Lindsay Way? Who is Lindsay Way? Basis to electro punk rock band Mindless Self Indulgence. If you've never listened to Mindless Self Indulgence, you're missing out. It's nothing like grunge music, but you're probably going to like it if you were a Nirvana fan. Francis is good friends with Lindsay Way, bassist of Mindless Self Indulgence. They've even done some art exhibits together. But by far the coolest thing I found out about Francis is that she did not condone her mother publishing her father's journals. To this day, Francis Bean has not read the journals. She says she will never read the journals. She says it is an invasion of privacy and she wishes her mother had never published them, never sold them. Now, Courtney knew that there would be backlash for publishing and selling Kurt's journals, not only from family members, but fans as well, and how she manipulated her way around this and justified selling his journals was one note. Don't read my diary when I'm gone. Okay, I'm going to work now. When you wake up this morning, please read my diary. Look through my things and figure me out. This was obviously a note Kurt left to a roommate or a girlfriend, possibly Courtney, possibly Tracy Miranda. I don't know exactly who he left it for, but I know that it was not a note for the entire world. But Courtney being Courtney said, well, he wanted people to read his journals. He wanted people to figure him out. It's okay if I sell these and publish them. Francis to this day disagrees. And I agree with her too. To this day, believe it or not, someone who has spent the last year just talking and studying Kurt Cobain, I have yet to read those journals. I want to. I'm not putting anybody down who has read them. I really want to. I just feel like too much guilt. It's like he didn't want me to see those things, so I'm not going to look at them. It'd probably help my channel out a lot, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. This is going to conclude part one of Growing Up Francis Bean Cobain. In the next episode, which is going to be coming out rather quickly because I want to get this done quickly, we are going to be talking about more criminal interactions. Courtney Love doing crazy stuff and more Frances Bean growing up and we're going to get into her marriage and the aftermath of the marriage. I wanted this to be a whole complete story, not just start with Frances Bean's marriage and go from there. I wanted to start from the beginning, show everyone what this girl went through with her mother and then how her mother affected her marriage and even her divorce. Stick with me. If you've never subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Likes always help to get the videos out to more people, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.